Hi everyone, welcome back. So this time in chapter three, we're going through the structure of crystalline solids. Crystal being the key word in here, crystal. So first off, what is the difference in atomic arrangement between crystalline and non-crystalline solids? What are crystal structures? And second thing, what metals are crystals? They are. And what are the characteristics of crystal structures? What are the crystal epigraphic points, directions, and planes? Um, as a note, you're going to see there's a whole lot this semester, so make sure you master them. And finally, what characteristics of material's atomic structure determine its density? Also important once we get to the mechanical properties. So first off, let's look at this. Um, what's the difference between crystalline and non-crystalline? Well, in a random packing, it's not very dense, and also because we're not as close as we could be, the average bond length is larger than it should be. Because of that, we're not at the lowest energy point, which means that this is just not as stable. It's more willing to break apart, which makes sense. This is kind of how glass looks. Now this is dense and ordered packing, so it's atomic, its typical neighbor bond length is very, very small, and it's actually at that perfect low energy bond length. So this makes it much more stable, much happier to be here. This is actually the reason that if you give diamond a long enough time, it will turn into pencil lead. The whole thing, diamonds are forever? Not true. Diamond is extremely hard, however, its typical neighbor bond length is actually higher than it should be for a crystal made out of carbon. And eventually it will drop back down. Now that takes millions upon millions of years, so Diamonds are forever when it comes to like a human life, but eventually it will go back to the dense ordered packing that it wants to be in. So what we get here is that these ordered structures tend to be near the minimum bonding energy and therefore are more stable. Now that's not always the case because if you look at this guy right here, we could have stacked it something like this and then we would have increased our nearest neighbor bond length. It's not packed quite as densely. It's still ordered, just not as densely packed. So the more dense, the more ordered, typically the more stable. Okay, so crystalline materials, atoms are arranged in periodic 3D arrays. Okay, periodic three-dimensional arrays. This is typical of metals. You know, metals are just a bunch of atoms all stacked together. Think, um, if you've ever seen like water bottles be packed together, when you look at them from the side, they all fit perfectly, and that's how metals are. They're all packed as tightly as they can go. Some polymers are like this, not as many, and some ceramics, though sometimes you have a crystalline version and a non-crystalline version, as you'll see right here. It's the same material, just one is crystalline, one is non-crystalline. Now in this case, they have no periodic arrangement. You know, there's if I take any particular section, it's not repeating. If I take any section of this, I will see it repeat other white places. It repeats here, it repeats here, it repeats here, it repeats here. It's everywhere. This shape might be one of a kind. Now this occurs for very complex structures or when we have rapid cooling, okay? Rapid cooling leads to this because if you give it a long enough time when you're cooling, those atoms are gonna move into the correct shape. They might be looking like this, you know, they're in this some crazy shape, but if you give them enough time, because they're hot to start and they're cooling down, they're gonna be vibrating back and forth and they will vibrate into the correct position. Best way to really like give this is, if you've ever seen any movie with like liquid nitrogen and somebody gets frozen, or like a cartoon, you know, the, they open the door and suddenly they're just instantly frozen. Um, it's kind of that situation here. If you want to make an analogy, think about it this way. Um, when metals get cold, they want to huddle together to get warm. So all of these got as close as they could to each other so that they could conserve their metaphorical body heat. However, in this case, they froze. They got cold too quickly. They weren't able to move, and so they froze in strange, crazy shapes. So kind of think of that thing. Think about it one way. They were able to move together to conserve heat, though, you know, metals aren't heating up at randomly. And the other one, they couldn't do that. They didn't have enough time, and so they stay in strange shapes. 
Another term for non-crystalline is amorphous. When I've heard that glass is an amorphous solid, and people might tell you, oh, that means that it, it melts slowly. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that it has a non-repeating structure. Okay. Now, metallic crystals are what we're going to be talking about for quite a while because that's where we see most of our craziness. Um, most of what we're going to be talking about is dealing with metals. It's the most important materials you have to work with. Now, for metals, they have very dense atomic packing. Now, why is the, what's the reason for this dense packing? Well, for one, bonds between metal atoms are non-directional. If I have an ionic bond, it is actually attracted to every single atom around it. Any negative ion, this positive ion is connected to. Metallic bonding is very, very similar in that regard. It's attracted to every single bond around it. Covalent bonding, though, is not non-directional. This water atom is most definitely caring about these two more than anything else. Okay? So if I have a bunch of water molecules next to each other, they're not going to start perfectly forming structures because their bonds are directional. The more directional a bond is, the less um, dense it will be packed. Because that gets in the way. You're like, it's kind of like when you're trying to hold hands with somebody in public. You're walking through a very dense crowd of people and you're trying to hold somebody's hand. Well, your two are staying together, and you're holding hands, but because of that, you are pushing other people further away. Okay, they have to move around you. You're not all working together, and obviously you're not holding hands with some random stranger. So it's the same thing here. If you're directional, you are actually avoiding others. When it's non-directional, you are trying to be as close as you can to everyone around you. Now, the nearest neighbor bond distance, like we said, tend to be small in order to lower the bond energy. That was part of that curve right there. There's a certain point where you have the best distance and you want to keep there. Also, there's a high degree of shielding of the ion cores because there's so many electrons. Which what that means is that all of these atoms, they can be very close together. Even though they're positively charged, all of the ions are positively charged. It doesn't matter because there's so many electrons flowing around them that they don't even see each other. Also, since metals are just one component, which is one different type, not several, they're much simpler structures than ceramics or polymers. And we're going to examine three structures of for different metals, but we're going to do that next time. So I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time as we jump into our first crystal structure. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.